Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah Alhamdulillah I'm on the road to recovery but I'm not 100% there <coughs> You are sick! So if I slur words or if I die in the middle of the video then uh, call 911 or 999 I prefer 999 because if you call 911 then they're gonna have to get aeroplane and customs and by the time they get here I probably would have decomposed you know Wait, Pause this guy for a second, be quiet for a second, okay, shut, him up, shut him up for a second That's the gen yeah There is a movie by Amazon Prime, by Amazon Originals that has come out. It's called Everybody's Talking About Jamie. This is based upon a play that has been taking place in the UK for quite a while. And Amazon has taken it upon themselves to turn it into a movie. So here you have a 16 year old gay boy who likes to dress as a woman. And his best friend is a, you've guessed it, a hijabi. And she is somebody that unconditionally supports and encourages him. The hijabi is of course played by an Indian. And the only thing Islamic that they show about this hijabi is the fact that she wears a hijab and the fact that she eats halal food. Other than that, she is your typical wants to be a doctor, kisses the boy, the boy kisses her many times also, she sings and dances, here they love including us yeah, but when it comes to Islamophobia the government hasn't even agreed on a definition. Oh and by the way, the th in the theatre version the main character is not played by a white person, it's played by a black person. So it seems that they're using the hijabi to promote their movie and play by means of controversy or it could be an insidious way to get through to the Muslims. Let me explain. There's a scene where she compares her minority struggles to that of his LGBTQ struggles as if they are somewhat similar. But I ask you, are they? Do you guys have parents whose countries are being bombed for natural resources and geopolitics? We don't have an influential lobby that has penetrated the government and the school education board Ofsted. We don't have corporations and the media supporting us. Yeah, you are corporations waving the LGBTQ flag and saying yes we endorse um, this cause and you've got movies coming Yeah, every other month that are pro-LGBTQ. Us Muslims don't get that sort of privilege and you don't have racist government policies like Prevent that criminalize your young and the likes of Schedule 7 that criminalize your families when they're traveling. That being said, the movie is subtler in its approach compared to its predecessors. It doesn't force the LGBTQ message down our throats, but there are two things to take note. What it does is incrementally and step by step, it raises the stakes. First, as we see in this movie, it's just dressing, yeah? I just want to dress like the opposite gender. Then it's wanting to be a woman, yeah? Gender dysphoria. And then, it goes to using puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones and of course a life-altering surgery. In fact the movie starts off with him merely wanting to dress like a woman, still being a boy, having a stage name and all that sort of stuff but it ends with a gender dysphoria sort of message in which he likes dressing up like a woman, away from that whole drag thing. And number two, the attacking of masculinity. Yeah I mean Nowadays you see a lot of people talk about masculinity as toxic. In fact even in this movie they show the father as being the typical football watcher, wanted the boy, goes to the pub as a pint, that sort of male figure and because he doesn't accept the uh, journey of the son the mother actually calls him an idiot. If it's not that it's the endocrine disruptors in the male products that we see that are messing with the, uh, the the level of hormones in our body and that's why you see more men are becoming more feminine and eventually like some people say they're going to link testosterone with 
domestic violence, with rape, with aggression. And that's that's where this is going, yeah? Toxic masculinity, it needs to be controlled, it's harmful for our society. All right, what do we do? Okay, before a child's born, we got to alter the genes, yeah? The DNA, as they're probably going to do with this whole gender dysphoria thing, yeah? Sex and gender, it's all fluid, mate. Doesn't matter what biology says, it's all fluid, we don't really know. And you know, people go through all this craziness when they get older. So what we should do is just stop it from when they're young. Yeah, just fiddle with the genes a little bit and help them make their own decisions. Then they can get operations when they get older. Yeah, we got to support them. This is where it's going. So the movie storyline is not very realistic. Yeah, it shows that the school is openly uh, against him. Uh, in terms of the teachers, it shows his friends, of course, are against him. He's got bullies that constantly harm him and the likes. Uh, but this goes against uh, Lisa Littman's 2018 study that she did at Brown University. And she says that, in fact, it increased popularity amongst peers and was a greater protection from teachers from bullying. Of course, Lisa's study was retracted because the, you know, pro-LGBTQ, bombarded the university, got the research taken down. In fact, we're seeing this a trend with a lot of things. There's in fact a book called Irreversible Damage that they were trying to get rid of on Amazon. I actually bought my copy. So yeah, let's talk about some of the research. Let's start with Britain's largest clinic that treats gender dysphoria. It's called Tavistock and Portman. They get children as young as three. Yes, you heard me, three. Yeah, you can see the sources as I'm saying it on the screen and you can see the bar chart, you know, three, four, five. I mean, come on, we don't allow kids to have piercings, tattoos, cigarettes because we say, look, they're going to have a, you know, permanent effect on you. You should be at a certain age where you can think for yourself and think independently and properly and then you can make these decisions. But when it comes to gender, I mean, you've got young kids that are taking puberty blockers. Puberty blockers. I mean, the research doesn't even tell us about the risks. Yeah, because we don't have enough data. In fact, there's so many harms that are coming out. And then here's, here's a brilliant one, yeah? Uh, across 11 long-term studies on gender dysphoric children, up to 90% stopped having these thoughts by puberty and they were comfortable with the sex that they had. The RCGP says there's lack of evidence and lack of long-term data <coughs> for puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones which are being given to young kids like I said and there's a long list of side effects of testosterone and estrogen which you can find on uh, page 158 and 159 of Deborah Sow's book which I think she went on Joe Rogan's podcast which was censored. At BBC reported a study that linked blockers yeah uh, puberty blockers to self-harm and suicidal tendencies. Now, of course, there wasn't a controlled group, but that doesn't necessarily negate these studies. After all this, what is the Islamic stance? If this hijabi was to uh, guide or speak or advise this individual, what sort of things could she say? Well, Islam encourages a strong sense of identity, confidence and gratitude in what God has given us so we're not constantly second-guessing ourselves. And for this reason, the Prophet peace be upon him has categorically and clearly forbade cross-dressing. And then this person could go on to say that, look, life is a test. Yeah, and in this test, we come across many, many desires. And as Muslims, we've been told to control our desires. Yeah, and we have certain worship that helps and trains us to do so, like fasting in the month of Ramadan. Yeah, going to Hajj, giving 2.5% of our savings annually, praying five times a day and the likes. And of course, the fact that our sexuality does not define us. That doesn't come top of the list for us. Yes, sex is a part of our life, but it's a small part of our life. Our life is much bigger and more encompassing. Some people have made this part of their identity, but our identity first and foremost is being a Muslim. What end advice would I give to parents and kids that are going through this sort of stuff? Well, a, 20, a 2019 study shows that counseling helps. Don't rush into anything physically life altering read and educate yourself. Like I said, uh, there's a really good book called uh, Irreversible Damage. Yeah, 
check that out it contains uh, a lot of cases of what people have gone through and <coughs> and that sort of stuff realize that the research that we see nowadays is fast becoming biased because the people that are challenging the lgbtq narrative are being suppressed the researchers are being disparaged and academics are just scared to speak out and studies also show that people that are getting engrossed in this sort of lifestyle is because they are frequenting these coming out videos yeah especially on youtube yeah you're watching a lot of these videos and it depends on the friends you're hanging around also yeah stats also show that such people are more inclined towards this lifestyle and this goes to the parents disowning your children only makes them double down on this lifestyle being there and giving them unconditional love and support does inshallah show that they do uh, come back yeah that they do come back and they're comfortable with their uh, original innate fitra yeah and identity that allah has given them until next time assalamu alaikum